Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your college football top 25 video for week number 11 this Saturday, November the 11th. And by the way, it is Veterans Day this Saturday. Bring out the big flag for Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day, and thank you to all the veterans out there. And by the way, do me an extra favor. If you are a veteran, comment below. Let me know so I can give you an extra salute and thank you in the comment section below here on YouTube. We do appreciate what you all do on a daily basis. All right, let's get to some top 25 action here for week 11, November the 11th, this Saturday. We have four head-to-head -head top 25 matchups and another game that was just a bit outside for making the cut. A World Series might be over, but it's never too late or too early to go to just a bit outside. So we're going to have five games for you here, the five biggest games, in my opinion, this week in college football. Don't forget, if you want my official best bets, they're available as well on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and promo code this week, all 30 Gets you an instant $50 discount on any 30-day subscription. Football, basketball, or all sports. Instant $50 discount with promo code ALL30, A-L-L-3-0. All30 gets it done. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's start in start time order, and you don't have to wait long for what I think is the biggest and best game of the week, and that's at noon Eastern on Fox. Number three, Michigan. Number 10, Penn State. And I've talked about this game on several shows and videos here on Wager Talk TV, so I know you loyal viewers already know which way I'm going with this one. But I know many of you tune in here just for the Top 25 video, so let's go deep once again into this game. If you recall a few weeks ago, I had a strong best bet for my clients. I gave it out for free on this video on Ohio State minus the four, four and a half when they were at home against Penn State, and they got it done as expected. Uh, one of the reasons I liked Ohio State was my database simulation favored them by nine points. I thought we were getting value. Also thought Penn State would have trouble stepping up in class on the road for the first time this season. But now because of that result and the Penn State loss, I think it's the exact opposite situation. We now get value with the Nittany Lions for several reasons. First of all, let's look at my 10,000 game simulation. On average, I've got Penn State winning this game outright by one and a half points. Uh, so as a four and a half point home dog, there is line value. And isn't it a little surprising that they were a four, four and a half point dog at Ohio State now, three weeks later, they're the same number at home as a dog against Michigan, who's actually behind Ohio State in the computer uh, playoff rankings. So Michigan's probably just as good, but definitely not any better, I don't think, than Ohio State. And Penn State's at home now, yet the spread is the same. So that shows you there's value. I run other simulations as well with have Penn State winning this game straight up. And yardage simulations that I run also have Penn State outgaining Michigan on average. So this is the definition of a live dog. It's also a defensive home dog in that Penn State's allowing just nine points a game at home this year in their five home games. And overall, they're giving up less than 12 points in all games, just two yards per rush, 59 yards per carry. And yes, Michigan ran the ball well against them last year, but Michigan's not running as well this year, just 167 rushing yards a game. And even last week, their 41-point output against Purdue, Michigan only had 110 rushing yards. The week before, they beat Michigan State 49-0. They only had 120 rushing yards. So I think it's a different attack this year, and Penn State matches up well. Also, big step up in class from Michigan as they've been favored by 24 or more in seven of their nine games this year. The only two times they weren't, they were still 17 and 19 point road favorites a month ago at Nebraska and Minnesota. Huge step up in class. And yes, Penn State fell short against Ohio State, but they've got that game under their belt now. So I think the situation sets up well this time to back the Nittany Lions. I like Penn State plus the four and a half. Hey, comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this game and the other games this week that you like as well. In college football, I read all the comments and I reply back. Let's win together here on Wager Talk TV. All right, let's get to another top 25 game on Saturday afternoon. This one's at 3.30 Eastern on Fox. Also, a nice lineup here on Fox. In fact, three of the five games I'm talking about here for this Saturday are Fox National TV. So they really benefited for some great games. And this one is number 18, Utah. The Utes at number five, Washington. And the Huskies remained undefeated. Got by what I thought was going to be a tough test for them last week against USC. High-scoring win, as expected, it was a high-scoring game, 52-42 win, soared over that total of 76-and-a-half, and now they take on a much better defensive opponent in Utah. Huge step up in class after facing the below-average USC defense. They're facing a Utes team that allows just 16 points a game and just 4.9 yards per play this season. As we check the Wager Talk Live odd screen on Thursday evening, uh, Washington is currently about a 9-and-a-half point favorite. Total is 50. <laughs> It's about 25, 26 points less than last week's total. So once again, uh, should be a lower score in defensive game, but Washington's offense is really good, uh, averaging eight yards per play, 41 and a half points a game. Um, so this will be a real test for Washington against the Utah defense, but obviously the toughest opponent I think Utah has faced this season as well. 
Let's check the simulation, the database simulation. 10,000 games run through the database on average as Washington winning by nine and a half points, which is exactly the point spread once again. Uh, so I really don't see much value on either side. Utah does qualify as a good defensive dog, though, once again, allowing just 16 points a game. And head coach has also been good as a dog over the years. Tough scheduling spot here having to travel after back-to-back -back home games. Um, but they looked really good last week against Arizona State, 55-3 to win. Could that be enough to get pulled the upset here? You know, I think Washington probably picks up a loss at some point. Thought last week was actually going to be when it was. Didn't happen. But they've got Utah, Oregon State, and Washington State still on deck. So if the Huskies run the table, uh, they're going to obviously earn a top four ranking, in my opinion. Right now, they're number five, though. So they got to keep winning. Difficult test here. But once again, my game simulation has it exactly at nine and a half, which is the current point spread. All right, two more true head-to-head -head top 25 matchups. Next one also goes at 3.30 Eastern in the SEC. A little bit of an under-the-radar game here. Number 13, Tennessee against number 14, Missouri on CBS. And these are two teams that are now to the national title hunt, in my opinion, both at 7-2. and two. Uh, But they still have a lot to play for, obviously, as highly ranked teams. And the question in this one becomes, how does Missouri respond after losing to Georgia last week? Yes, they lost by nine, but they covered as a two-touchdown dog. And it was a pretty good showing, in my opinion. Put up over... 350 yards of offense against that tough Georgia defense. Um, on the season, Missouri's been very good on both sides of the ball. So has Tennessee. In fact, both teams are about a yard per play above average offensively, about a yard per play above average defensively. So two really good teams here. Uh, let's check the database simulation. First of all, 10,000 games run through the simulation. On average, I've got Missouri winning this one by one and a half points. As we check the Wager Talk live odd screen, we see the Tennessee is favored by one and a half. So there is some line value with Missouri based on my simulation. My concern, though, is that they have a little bit of a hangover after the Georgia loss, and they just picked up their second loss of the season, which can also be a bit of a bubble burster um, for teams. Meanwhile, Tennessee got their second loss a few weeks ago against Alabama. They did respond well, though, 2-0 and straight up in ATS the last two weeks, and they had a much easier opponent in game last week, 59-3 win over Connecticut as a 35-point favorite. So I think the situational setup is better for Tennessee, but once again, my simulation slightly favors Missouri. So let's look at the total in this one. Uh, opened as high as 58 and a half. It's now down to 57, but when you project how good these defenses have been at times this year, um, I think there might be some value with the under. You know, Tennessee was really explosive offensively last year, but they don't throw the ball quite as well this year, but they are getting it done defensively, giving up just 18 and a half points a game. Of course, the concern with the total would be if Missouri does come a bit flat and hung over and beat up from the Georgia game, that might show on the defense, defensive side of the ball. Uh, so once again, this one's right around my number. I think you can make a case for both teams here at 3.30 Eastern. So this is a game I probably will be staying away from. But once again, top 25. So I wanted to cover it for you here on the video. All right, one more final head-to-head -head top 25 game. This, along with the Penn State game, is probably the biggest game of the week. And that's Ole Miss-Georgia. We've got a true top 10 matchup here with number nine Ole Miss at number two Georgia. 7 o'clock Eastern, Saturday night on ESPN. And I mentioned Georgia last week had plenty of incentive to blow out Missouri, but they weren't able to do so. And the Bulldogs won, yet once again failed to cover. In fact, they've gone 9-0 straight up, just 2-6-1 and one against the spread. But those two covers were definitely the two most focused spots this season against undefeated Kentucky a month ago and the cocktail party against Florida two weeks ago. And maybe there was a little bit of a letdown after that game, and that's why Missouri was able to hang within the number. But I would think Georgia comes fully motivated here with a top-10 opponent at home and Ole Miss has plenty to play for as well with an eight and one record they are still alive in the national title hunt if they can pull the upset in this game but I don't think that happens uh, let's check first of all my database simulation 10,000 games run through the database on average as Georgia winning this one by 13 and a half points and we compare that with the current market line of minus 10 and a half some 11s out there but once again there is value with Georgia in this game and I like the fact that they have underperformed against the spread I've used them one time this year as an official best bet for my clients, and that was that Kentucky game. I also gave it to you here in the video a few weeks ago. Gave you also Georgia over Florida here in the video. Last week, it was pretty much around my numbers. I stayed off the game, but I mentioned I would lean towards Georgia just for that motivation. The fact they didn't cover against Missouri, I think, makes this week a little bit of a stronger situation. And the fact that Ole Miss is probably or is the best opponent they've played uh, this season, I look for who I think is the number one team in the country to become focused. And keep in mind, Ohio State is still ahead of them in the playoff rankings. That's why I said in this video, number two, Georgia. But Georgia is getting the majority of the first place votes in both the AP poll and the coaches poll. So they have plenty of incentive to win this one by margin. I think Georgia wins this by two touchdowns or more. So I like the Bulldogs if you're looking at this game on Saturday night. 
All right, those are the four official top 25 head-to-head matchups. There's one game that was just a bit outside from making the cut. Going to get to that for you in just a moment. A Pac-12 late-night game at 10.30 Eastern. But first, a reminder, my official best bets for this Saturday, college football, my Sunday NFL best bets, my daily NBA and college basketball best bets are all available right now on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Yes, you can get the daily package. Uh, one day, all sports is 39 individual plays or 25 or save $50 instantly on any 30-day subscription. That can be football only. It could be basketball only. Or the best option is the all sports, all-inclusive 30-day. No matter which option you choose, be sure to use promo code ALL30 when you check out to get an instant $50 discount on any 30-day subscription. And that offer is good through this weekend only. So don't delay. Take advantage right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with that shortcut code WT dot buzz slash sm all right let's look at one bonus game for you on the way out here a game that just missed the cut and that's number 28 usc southern cal at number six oregon and that is a late night game at 10 30 eastern on fox of course usc has been top 25 all season but that third loss of the year against highly ranked washington last week knocked them out of the rankings officially and they take on now number six oregon who i think is actually one of the best teams in the country keep in mind Oregon went into Washington about a month ago, lost the game 36-33, missed a field goal late, would have had overtime otherwise, but they outgained Washington in that game uh, by over 100 yards, had over 540 total offensive yards on the road. This is a really good Oregon team. Now, yes, USC has a great offense as well, but the difference in this one is how much better Oregon's defense is. Both offenses average around 45, 47 points. They both average over seven and a half yards per play. But USC has given up 34 and a half points a game. Oregon's allowing 16. USC has given up 6.1 yards per play. Oregon's allowing just 4.7. So that's going to be the difference in this one. And as I mentioned last week, I thought USC would get up for the Washington game, and they did. They, they lost 52-42. They just couldn't stop them. You have to worry about the mindset now taking to the road, and they have UCLA the, on deck with the home finale. I think this is a dangerous spot for an Oregon team that has plenty of incentive to win big because Oregon, once again, does have that one loss on their record. Uh, they're on the outside looking in right now from the top four, so they need to win by margin. And my database simulation doesn't even factor that in, still has them winning on average by 23 points in this game. So, yes, we get some line value because the current line is only minus 15, so I like Oregon in this spot. The one concern, of course, is that USC does have backdoor cover potential, no question about it. Uh, as they average nine and a half yards per pass. But I think Oregon has some front door cover potential in this game for a couple reasons. First of all, USC can't stop anybody. Uh, they've given up 101 points combined the last two weeks to Cal and Washington. Now they're on the road. So I think they're going to wear down even more in the fourth quarter, which means a late Oregon score is likely. Plus, as I just mentioned, the Ducks have plenty of incentive to win big and win by margin to get their ranking and their resume even stronger. Keep in mind, this Oregon team put up over 80 points in their first game against Portland State in week one, followed up with 55 points a couple weeks later against Hawaii. And uh, they put up 63 against California at home last week. Um, and they both played Cal, played USC and then played Oregon. Cal barely lost to USC 50 to 49 and then lost uh, by 44 points to Oregon. So this is a really good Ducks team. And I think we actually do get lined. I know 15 looks like a big number, but my database simulation has Oregon winning by 23. So I like the Ducks. Wanted to give that to you as a little bonus content here on the Top 25 video for this Saturday, Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day once again, Week 11, college football. And hey, once again, if you are a veteran, thank you for your service. Let's get that big flag out one more time. And comment below. Let me know if you are a veteran so I can give you an extra salute and a thanks. And everyone else can thank you as well. I read all the comments. I reply back. Thumbs up, like if you found the video useful. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for instant alerts. You know when this Top 25 video goes up every Thursday. And also my NFL Fade the Public is posted this weekend. Hit the bell for an instant alert so you can be the first to watch and take advantage of that actionable info. And if you'd like to get my personal best bets, super strong Saturday college football and NFL card on Sunday. I love this weekend football card. And don't forget about basketball. Nobody has won more in the NBA the past couple seasons. NBA sides past two and a half years up over 150 units. College football and pro football sides combined ranked number one the past two years. And college basketball a couple years ago was number one as well. Not a bad time to get football and basketball. Pick the package that works best for you. Any 30-day package, you get an instant $50 discount with promo code ALL30. A-L-L-3-0, ALL30 gets you an instant $50 discount on any 30-day subscription. But it's good through this weekend only, so don't delay. Check out my page right now, Steve Merrill, 
wagertalk.com. And don't forget, I post free bets on a daily basis throughout the week. Check out that page for additional free plays as well and get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well, at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter. And also posting free plays on a daily basis on Instagram. That's right, I'm on Instagram now. Who knew? Merrill underscore Steve on Instagram and follow Wager Talk as well. Thanks for watching. Best of luck and check in this weekend for Fade the Public right here on Wager Talk TV.